So I just got home from work, eating a. Hey. Someone else wants this. Leroy, get off. So like I was saying, trying to eat this quest bar, uh, but you know, I haven't had a quest bar my entire life up until like two months ago. Uh, and I don't eat them often just because I don't need 19 grams of fiber in one sitting really, because I get a lot of fiber anyways. But if I do eat one, this is my favorite. I haven't had the s'mores one yet, but I heard that one's pretty good. But this is the white chocolate raspberry. In my opinion, by far like the best protein bar flavor I've ever had in my life. Uh, so eating this kind of just gets some more food in me because I'm starving. My appetite has been ridiculous lately. So I'm gonna jump carbs up to 500, um, just because I've been working out more because of PT for the army. I'm up longer during the days uh, and I'm growing. Uh, I'm really not gaining weight right now, so can't hurt to up those carbs. So I'm gonna eat this and then uh, we're going to Longhorn Steakhouse for dinner tonight. So I'll show you what I typically get. I'm gonna still fit my macros or hit my macros, hit and fit my macros, uh, and kind of just wrap up the video tomorrow with some workouts on Friday. So enjoy the video. Mmm, so good. So what I'm doing right now before we go on to eat is like for a lot of restaurants, you can go on their site and find their nutrition information, not for like mom and pop shops, uh, but for like franchise places for like Longhorn Steakhouse, you can download their nutrition information and literally everything on their menu, even like a la carte items, uh, you can get whatever you want. So I think I'm going to get the Flo's Filet 8 ounce steak, macros, 18 grams of fat, three grams of carbs and 50 grams of protein. The, the carbs are probably from like a marinade or a seasoning or something, uh, but 50 grams of protein. And then I'll probably get a sweet potato and then a side salad, uh, some sort of dressing. And then we have a coupon for a free appetizer. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna get there. So dinner tonight ended up being a free meal for the week uh, just because that appetizer no way fits my macros. Uh, so what I ended up doing and what I typically do, I tracked macros today, I hit my macros and then that appetizer, that shrimp with the breading and stuff, I'm gonna show you clips of my dinner right now on the overlay, uh, kind of just didn't fit my macros. So I'm sure that was probably anywhere from 300 to 600 calories. Um, I had about half of it with ranch dressing, so you know, calories add up. But oh well, uh, so I ended up having eight ounces of steak, about 12 ounces of sweet potato, a salad, and what I do is I'm a salad sometime if I really don't have many calories to run with, uh, is I just use vinegar. I get like oil and vinegar on the side and just top it with vinegar. That way it's just, I know zero calories. So I had that, we had the appetizer of the shrimp and then a few pieces of bread. So macros are pretty close for the night and then I'm finishing it off with three servings of Cinnabon Fun Dryers Ice Cream, one serving of pretzels, and then a little bit of Walden Farms Zero Calorie Chocolate Syrup, and then a Diet A&W Root Beer. So that wraps up the video for tonight, and then next clip will be tomorrow's training session. So I just got on my lunch break, about to go in the gym and do mobility and stretching stuff because right after work I'm going to the gym. But I was just reading an article that Bryce Lewis published that was absolutely awesome in regards to auto regulation for your workouts and using the RPE scale. And I'll link it in the description box below. Check it out because it's a very, very good read. Uh, but just explaining it a little bit, um, the RPE scale is a scale from one to 10 and it's the rate of perceived exertion. So say for example, you had an RPE eight on an exercise, a set of squats. That means you could have done two more reps. RPE nine means you could have done one more rep. RPE 10 is you want the failure. And uh, you know how I'm gonna start incorporating it is in how he explained it. Say you had a day where you go into the gym and you just weren't feeling good during your workouts or your warm up, Or say you slept two hours the night before and you know you're just not gonna hit the weights you usually do. So rather than using a percentage-based workout off your one rep max, where I usually do say 385 on squats, at 85% for you know three reps, and after that it was like an RPE nine, so after three reps I probably could've got one more rep if I really pushed it, 
uh, but I didn't go to failure. So rather than working with that 385, I'll probably lower the weight just because I'm not feeling good that day and still hit an RPE 9. So maybe I drop it to 375. I still get three reps. I caught it, could have probably got one more rep, but I didn't push it because I wasn't going to failure. So you can use RPE scale uh, and the, the percentage-based workouts you do depending on how you're feeling that day. So that's how I'm going to start incorporating it um, and just alter regularly my workouts because, you know, I've worked crazy hours right now. So sometimes I'll work 36 hours straight, maybe sleep like an hour or two at night and then go to the gym the next day. And I'm obviously not hitting the numbers I want to. Uh, and it's really disappointing. So you could auto regulate your workouts using the RP scale, still hitting uh, that number close to failure and still have a really good workout, even though you're not hitting you know, your typical 385, 405, whatever. Uh, and then using it for accessory lifts. And I love the way he explained this because this is how I explain it sometimes. I don't track like my accessory workouts. Uh, I'll track my weight I did for bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press. But when I go in and do like accessory stuff, say arms, uh, lateral raises, extensions, curls, stuff like that, I don't track any of that stuff. I usually just go to an RP9. And I think a lot of you guys probably do this too, where you do accessory stuff, you're going pretty much almost a failure. And I think that's how it should be. Uh, so just think of it as going to an RP9, you probably could have done one more rep, or an RP10, you were just burnt out, um, and using a weight that you're comfortable with, and not really worrying about progression with the weights on that, but that you're just going to failure um, and making progressive movements towards your compound movements. So today's workout was heavy deadlifts, and volume work for squats. And that's how I've been splitting it up. So when I do heavy, uh, say deadlifts, I'll go volume on squats. And when I go say heavy bench, I'll do volume on deadlifts. I don't like doing the 10, 5, 3, 1, 1, 1 rep scheme for two different exercises. My compound lifts are in the same workout. Uh, and so far making excellent progress. Hit a PR on deadlifts today for 560 easy. So every workout using this new rep scheme has been a 10 pound PR. And uh, then on squats, I started focusing on keeping my feet more narrow. And a lot of people were gonna comment and saying, you know, you should keep your feet wider. But for me, just personally, it's comfortable to keep my feet more narrow. Um, I can keep my back straighter. It takes less strain off my hip flexors, which have been a problem for me. And overall, I just feel better. One thing I do wanna address though in this video, and I don't feel obligated to do this because no one's really been asking me, um, but I feel like you know, outside of the YouTube community, a lot of people on YouTube are natural, believe it or not. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, commenting, asking questions and stuff are natural athletes. But people outside of YouTube, you know, a lot of beginners are always asking about steroids. Where can you get steroids? Do you ever take steroids? Because uh, they're just kind of novice to this whole thing. And I am natural, always have been natural, always will be natural. But I would be lying to you if I told you I've never thought about taking steroids. And I think a lot of people do. Um, people that just start working out, for one, they're like, all right, I need steroids to get as big as Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, you know, the Olympia guys, and you do. Like, you can't get that big without them. Uh, and then there's people that start making gains, and as soon as they start seeing progress, they're thinking, if I can make, you know, these gains as a natural athlete, think of the progress I can make enhanced. And these are the two times I thought about taking them. You know, you do your research, um, you look around, see what people are taking, what doses and stuff, but I never pulled the trigger on it. Never did it because I always thought I wanted to stay natural. It's just making gains and progress and PRs on squats, deadlifts, bench, doing competitions, cutting down. I think in my opinion, it's so much more rewarding knowing you did that all on your own. That's just my personal opinion. If you are enhanced and you take steroids, I have no problem with that. I don't condone it um, because they're illegal. And especially in the military, you cannot take steroids. And that's one thing, a reason I never did them either. Um, because ever since 2009, I knew I was gonna be in the military. To be an officer, if you go the ROTC option, you're studying in college and preparing to be an officer for four years before you even become a second lieutenant, before you actually go on active duty. Um, and some people have questions about the army and message me all the time not just the army, but the military in general. And if they think it's a good option for them and what I think of it. Um, personally, I got the four year army ROTC scholarship. So my 
college was 100% paid for by the Army. The only obligation I had was four years of active duty after college was over. Um, you know, I think the military is great for some people, and for some people, it just might not work out. I think it's a great career opportunity. Um, you get leadership opportunity. You learn a lot about yourself, other people. Um, being in a leadership position just teaches you so much. It's so rewarding. Um, and finally getting a platoon and being in a leadership position has been, <laughs> the two weeks I've had this job, the best job I've ever had in my life. It's, it's so rewarding and helping people out has just been a blast. So, you know, to, to wrap it up, if you're interested in joining the military, you know, to go talk to a recruiter, do your research online, because I think the opportunities while you're in and after in a civilian job are beyond anything you can find anywhere else. Uh, so that's just my take on that. And always staying natural. I support natural athletes. My company, Bear Performance Nutrition, only sponsors natural athletes. Uh, so that's just what I do. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Going home, enjoying this weekend, and I'll talk to you guys later.